Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome to Spirit's Journey, coming to you live on Truth Frequency Radio and simulcast on Oneness Talk Radio. Your hosts are Patrick and Catherine Andres. Join us each week as we explore a wide range of metaphysical topics such as dreams, astrology, intuitive readings, and life purpose. You'll receive practical guidance so that you can live your most awesome life. Learn more about what we do at intuitiveschool.com and connect with us on Facebook at Spirit's Journey Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spirit's Journey. We are coming to you live on Truth Frequency Radio. We are also being simulcast on One is Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Tune In, and Talk Stream Live. We are here in the heartland holding the energy for spiritual truth and awareness. I'm Patrick. And I'm Catherine. Welcome, everyone. Well, we got a special guest for everybody today, Teresa Padilla, one of the favorite guests. People always say they love having her on because she shares amazing information about seasonal food therapy. And we're getting into late summer. So, Teresa, I have known for many, many years. We studied metaphysics together. After receiving several degrees uh, in metaphysics, Teresa went on to study um, the nutritional food therapy, which she's going to share with us today. So, welcome, Teresa. Yay, wonderful to be here in late summer with you (laughs) both. We always love having you, and it's always timely because the seasons are always changing, so that's part of what you're teaching, right, is that it would really benefit us to adjust what we're eating according to the seasonal changes. Is that right? Yeah, that's been my focus uh, for the last really 10, 15 years is teaching people how to adjust, harmonize, and balance with five element theory uh, using seasonal foods and feng shui. And it it is amazing how much the the weather affects us because we just got back from uh, the Reignite Your Light event in Florida where, of course, it was very hot and humid and we all experienced different uh, physical things and then got back to Kansas City and is a little different here. So um, one of the things that is really fascinating to me is um, the five elements that the Chinese use. And I wondered if we could start off by talking about how do the five elements coincide with the seasons and also maybe describing what those five elements are? Yeah, that's a great question, Catherine. The, a lot of people associate the seasons with four seasons. And so it kind of throws you off a little bit to hear five seasons, five elements. Uh, The Chinese kind of really studied for years an ancient uh, relationship and framework with the influence of five elements and in relationship to mind, body, spirit, and, and the different aspects of nature. So the five elements are metal, which creates water, water, which creates wood, wood which creates fire, and fire which which creates earth. And the five seasons that conjunct or coincide with those are fall with metal, winter with water, spring with wood, and then early summer with fire, and late summer with earth. So those are the, those are the, that's the five element theory in, in its basic framework. When you study that, it really gives you a lot of insight, balance, and harmony um, into your life, your mind, your body, your spirit, and longevity. It's wonderful. Your body, your mind, and spirit start to attune to this nature and this natural rhythm. So um, I I did want to remind our listeners, too, that if you have any questions, um, you can Tune in to tfrlive.com and go to our chat room, or you can also go to the chat room at onenesstalkradio.com. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know in there. We might be able to take a caller later on, so we'll let you know if we're able to do that. Uh, So, Teresa, what uh, element and energy organs are associated with the summer? The summer is comprised of two, really, early summer and late summer. Right now we're in 
like kind of going in between early summer to late summer. So the fire element is the element that is associated with early summer. And the organ systems that most resonate with that is the heart, small intestines, and pancreas. Um, now, late summer is the earth element, and we're, which we are approaching. And stomach, stomach and spleen and pancreas are the seasonal energy organ systems that resonate with late summer. Hmm. So I'm curious, how does the Chinese system, because we're talking about five elements here, and I know in the West, a lot of times we talk about four elements, especially in metaphysics. We talk about earth, fire, water, and um, air. Um, so is there any kind of relationship between the four elements when we're talking about metaphysics and the five elements when we're talking about the Chinese food therapy? Yeah, there is a relationship. Um, you know, the Chinese go a little bit, uh, they break it down a little bit broader and that and what their study is. And what I think that is what, what is really the difference in that is that the uh, fifth element, which is earth, is early summer and late summer. And I think that's a very big distinction because what I found is that the earth element is really at the core of all of the elements. Um, there's really earth in every movement um, that we have. So when, you, when you're studying any kind of exercise, any kind of qigong, tai chi, martial arts, any kind of exercise, you have to really pay attention to your core or your center. If you don't have that, you're not going to have balance. And if you don't have that, you can't have integration or harmony in between the, move, between the movements. And it's the same thing with your when you're studying anything, you're rela in relationship to your your food that you're intaking, in relationship to these seasons or elements. You have to have that earth element in order to integrate everything, and that's why the earth element is associated. You see it associated with the yin yang symbol. So, um, since you mentioned the stomach, uh, spleen, and pancreas being uh, related to late summer, so would this mean that if you had a weakness in one of those organs, it might flare up? And what what can we do? Are we supposed to boost those organs during this time? Yeah, there are a couple things. Now, when the earth element and the stomach, spleen, and pancreas are highlighted during that season, it means that there's an abundance of uh, energy available that is just continuing to flow at that time of season. Now, yeah, if your stomach and spleen, which they uh, control and work with the flesh, they also work with uh, producing... Uh, balancing the waterways, so to speak, water retention. Uh, so if you have inflammation, if you have low energy, if you have joint issues, if you have um, any of those things, tissue problem, blood problem, vital fluid problem, then, yeah, you want to seek to balance and strengthen those organs. There's lots of things that you can do, um, and we'll talk about that, you know, during the show. Um, the course would kind of weave a little bit of everything into that. One of the big things is to uh, start your morning with some ginseng, some white ginseng, where you can get that in tablets at, at your different health markets. And you want to have white ginseng because that's more of a balancer. And then... You or ginseng root if you want to if you want to cook that and then cut it up in slices. Uh, you can take one of those slices with a tablespoon of raw honey, and before breakfast start your day with that. What that does is it lifts the spirit. It, it kind of helps to balance you for that day, and it helps kind of initiate that energy for the day, and that does help the earth become more balanced and, and steady. And so I know there's a lot of different kinds of ginsengs and I know like, isn't one of them supposed to be like a, 
you know, almost like a caffeine effect. And is the white ginseng that effect or is it stimulating or non-stimulating? It's more balancing the red ginseng, the red, the different ginseng types that are related to red are the ones that are used in stimulants. Uh, so yeah, you don't want that. You want the white ginseng. It's still rising and lifting, which is what ginseng does overall. Um, but it's not so much of a stimulant that it just throws you off, <laughs> off balance so much, you know. And so what's the best way to prepare that and take that in? Um, some people don't, you know, want to take the time of actually getting a white ginseng root, but if you can get that, the Korean white ginseng or uh, American uh, ginseng, you see a little bit more prevalent in the United States. Um, you can uh, cook that root in just water, just cover the root in water and cook it until it's tender and there's different sizes of roots and there's different uh fresh freshness of roots as well so you want you want to get it tender and then you slice it and you store it in honey actually uh once you do that and then you take it in the morning in raw honey and you take a slice of that uh, with a tablespoon of raw honey and you uh eat it before breakfast first thing in the morning Oh, and now if you, yeah, if you don't want to do that, you can take the white ginseng tablets. They're in powdered, they're, they're in powdered form. Uh, there's different forms of it, but the powdered form is kind of one that's more pure. And you can get white ginseng or uh, American ginseng. And no, then also I've... take that with raw, with a tablespoon of raw honey as well. Because the raw honey is what grounds the ginseng uh, you can become if you're very um, not not grounded you know and you have a tendency to and when I say not grounded what I mean is that you have a tendency to raise your ener energy from the stomach up and live in your head mo most of the time which a lot of people do most of the time there I mean we're we're in a bubble in our in our uh, social media so we're we're airheads <laughs> i would say most <laughs> of the time and um it's to ground you you have to live you know in your core and your root which is more associated with your kidney energy so the roots which is a ginseng root is grounding energy but it also is very rising energy and lifting so you want to make sure that it's grounded when you take it in and the raw honey helps you to do that Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so the raw honey, that's a, that's an addition probably a lot of people wouldn't think about. Now, out of curiosity, I've seen a lot of ginseng teas. And so if you had ginseng mm -hmm. tea with honey, would that be would there be any benefit to that? Because it doesn't seem like that would be as potent oh. as what you're describing here. Yeah, it's not as potent, but yeah, it definitely is a benefit. And I do, I, I take those as well. There's a lot of different, there's always some kind of, you know, a lot of health food stores have this right now because it's it's becoming popular it's becoming becoming more prevalent people are becoming more aware in the you know common everyday life of uh you know in our nutrition here in everywhere basically so it's a lot more uh you can have access to it more but you can also go to a chinese market an asian market and find roots there uh, and find different supplements there as well and lots of teas there as well and it is pretty cool because a lot of uh cities now have like a little chinese area um chinese mm -hmm. markets and so you know i mentioned in the beginning of the show that you know we were just traveling to florida and it, the climate was so hot and humid it you know, our food tastes change. So, and I know a lot of people in the summer are traveling and I'm going to be going away again this week to Michigan. And so what would you suggest? Like, you know, they say a lot, you know, take melatonin if you're on an airplane to relieve jet lag. So if we ate according to the season where we were traveling, would uh, we adjust better to wherever we were? Um, or should we keep with, you know, like, let's say you're in uh, winter months and you live in a cold climate, and then you go for spring break somewhere super hot, should you continue to eat according to where you live or according to where you're vacationing? 
Well, you want to have some staples that are going to help your own general constitution, and people kind of know what that is. They know what their areas of problem are, and you need you need things to help strengthen that. So, you know, say if you have a tendency towards inflammation and water retention, then yeah, you want to take you know eat take some remedies like uh, with, uh, that help move water. If you want to do it with foods, which is one of my fortes, is I love working with people with foods and natural uh, things of nature to help supplement your own wellness. And rice is one of the great things that helps you move water. So eating rice, um, there's always some kind of rice dish, and you can always get rice almost anywhere. So that's a good food that you can use. Anything um, that, like apples, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So true. It's round. It's, it goes to the stomach and spleen. It helps to balance the stomach and spleen. And once again, when you balance that earth element, then you're going to balance transition. When you transport, when you go to different places, that's what the earth elements what, is what rules those um, going to different places when you travel the most. So you want to balance your earth element the most. And, you know, red dates are a great thing to, to utilize. They're Chinese red dates or jujubes is what they're called. Um, and those grow like at little miniature apples off trees in uh, China. And here we get them in the form of red dates. They're dried. And you can get them in Asian markets. You can d- drink red date tea, which if you don't want to eat the red dates, you can drink the red date tea. Those are one of the best things that you can do to build your earth element, to strengthen your blood, your uh, tissue, and your vital fluids. And they really help balance you and strengthen you. It's funny you mentioned that. I would would take red date tea. I take red date tea with me when I travel. Oh, that's a good tip. And it's funny because when I go somewhere else, you know, my first desire is – I go to the supermarket and buy a bag of apples because I do my own breakfast. Like if I'm at hotels, it always consists of an apple and maybe a muffin. So I must have somehow subconsciously right. known to eat the yeah. apples. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's bring a little mind-body into this discussion, Teresa. And what, what are ways that the mind and body reveal being in harmony or out of harmony with the season? Like how are we going to know if we're in harmony? Well, right now, um, let's give a little background. Uh, I did say that metal creates water. I kind of gave the creative cycle with that. There's also a uh, ways of connection in when we're in harmony and way and a nourishment cycle as well that you can kind of track through the different elements. Uh, Like the heart is connected with the pulse, and we kind of all know that. But did you know that uh, the pulse is ruled by the kidneys? So there's the relationship between the heart and the kidneys or fire and water that you always have. Uh, Right now, um, being in like late summer and we're talking about stomach and spleen, uh, kidneys are connected with the bones and they're ruled by the spleen. So say you have, you could have right now, some low backache and you might think that's related to uh, your your bones or your kidneys and it is but it's also ruled by the spleen so doing things to help your spleen is going to in have that connection and also help your kidneys or your low back um, the spleen is connected with the flesh and it's ruled by the liver So you could have issues with your liver, but helping support the spleen is going to help that as well. Now, that just gives you an example. Uh, The nourishment cycle, right now in late late summer, it's the time for self-nourishment and self-cultivation. And, um, you know, it's a time of really reaping and ripening ourselves, receiving the abundance of the energy that's afforded to us by Mother Nature. And so what I think about is nourishing my body and my mind unconditionally. And one way that you can do it unconditionally is by when you really need something to help nourish you in that moment 
or you want something uh, to nourish you in that moment is to give yourself that because that's the way of training your mind, body, and spirit unconditionally to receive. And so, therefore, we don't repress things. We just naturally express things, and it helps the cycle to flow between the different elements. Uh, really good. So to practice nourishment, self-nourishment and self-cultivation is real important. And late su- late summer is a time to do that. So does sitting on a lounge chair, reading a book in the sun count for self-nourishment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah de- definitely, definitely. There's a, such a time to restore, to nourish ourselves like that. I mean, I, I uh, you know, have chosen to supplement, uh, you know, my financial (laughs) future and have to support my uh, daughter and grandson through a job that just is very taxing on my physical body, my mind, my emotions and everything. And uh, I love it, but it's, it's taxing and it, it just draws from me a lot. So I have to make sure that my living environment that I come home to is yin is uh you know i don't have a lot of social media going on there because i want to create that balance with that yin time and so that's a place that i come home to kind of restore myself and go outside be in nature so that i can really truly rest you know my mind body and spirit Well, it's interesting that you were mentioning that about the low back, because uh, as Kasha mentioned, we just got back from Florida where we were attending and participating in the Reignite Your Light Summit. And so because I was doing a crystal singing bowl uh, performance there with the didgeridoo and everything, I had to bring the bowls. And so we couldn't fly because, you know, they're so (laughs) fragile. There's no way to really uh, trust that with them on the plane. So it was was about a 20 hour drive for us down there. So we broke it up into two 10 hour segments. And I've noticed since I got back that my energy has been lower than it was. And my back has been a little bit glitchy in the morning when I get up. And I've heard before that uh, driving long, long distances and being in the car driving for a long time can affect the kidney. So I really did find that to be true. So I'll definitely uh, take that into a advisement do you have any other suggestions for people because summer is a big time for road trips and do you have any other thoughts on things that people can do definitely i mean eat rice (laughs) that's one of the big benefits there is rice tea too that's helpful because it'll help move that water which you retain when you're sitting for a long uh which is works with the kidneys that's one of the reasons why sitting uh, and for a long time, whether you're at work or on a computer or driving, uh, is because you know you're not moving that water. Uh, it's just kind of sitting there, and or that energy. So rice helps move the water that you re- that you retained during the trip or while you're sitting. Um, uh, winter squashes are a wonderful uh, way cooking with those and they're going to be prevalent, uh, you know, in your farmer's market, um, where you can get them now and cooking with the different winter squashes, just natural, you know, just cooking them or steam, steaming them, uh, and eat, p- preparing breads or muffins with them. So you can have in the morning. Um, those really help strengthen the spleen and the stomach a lot. And so I, that's ha- taking those with trips on you, uh, muffins. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, and I wanted to add that speaking of recipes, Teresa, I took some of Teresa's classes a while back and she provides this awesome little guide of recipes for the season. And Teresa, one of your recipes that was in there is this pumpkin date muffins, which has become my staple favorite. And I literally just made them the other day. So thank you for that. And, and oh, how can, yeah, those are great. can people purchase your um, guidebooks and classes yet? Or um, if they want some of these recipes? Right. 
Yeah, so, I mean, they can do that through Five Element Foodies right now, which is on Facebook, and I offer consultations one-on-one or in groups or for your business uh, right now where I have the workbooks available for that. What I do on a, with a one-on-one consultation is first thing that I'll do is ask somebody, um, you know, a series of questions because you want to find out Uh, what the daily routine for that individual is. And a lot of times people are so habitual that they really don't know what they take in in the form of food or herbs or supplements or their environment during the day. And in terms of right now your digestive system or working with earth element in late summer, digestion is key. And if you don't know what you're digesting in terms of what you're eating, what you're drinking, and what comes through you, to you in your environment, which is in the form of, it can be an emotional and physical support, um, that's the way that you digest as well. And social, we're bombarded by social media. There's so many things that we see and hear every day that we're digesting, but we don't even realize that we're digesting those things. And maybe you know, we're out of harmony with those things and we don't even know it. So by taking time, that's the first thing that I do is take time to ask questions and find out what that, the daily routine is so that then I can use um, what there are, what that person is already doing in relationship to what the season is at the time in relationship to maybe what their weaknesses are, help strengthen and help use neutral foods to help balance. All right. Well, that means that we are coming up on our break. So we will be back in about three minutes. Please remember, TFR is a listener-supported station. So this is Spirit's Journey on Truth Frequency Radio. See you on the other side. Protection from from deception. Back from the break, you are listening to Spirit's Journey with Patrick and Catherine Andrews. We are coming to you live on Truth Frequency Radio, being simulcast on Oneness Talk Radio, among many others. And we have Teresa Padilla with us today, who is sharing some information about seasonal foods and how we can adjust our diet to the seasons. And this is based on the Chinese philosophy, so it's been a very interesting program. If you're just joining us, Teresa, welcome back to the second half. Um, and Teresa, let's um, one question I've been dying to ask is, uh, what does it mean if your preference for seasons change? Like growing up, I used to like hate winter and love summer. I like lived for the warmth of summer. Now, um, I really like all the seasons. I, I appreciate winter and enjoy it um, equally as I do with summer. So does that mean I've made some kind of internal changes or is it more just my physical body is able to acclimate more to different seasons or what's your take on that? I think uh, neither, either yet both. You know, probably have acclimated to seasons and you have built an internal and uh, physical awareness and, app- and appreciation, you said it, of the, the seasons. So you're, you more benefit from the seasons, the more that you are aware, the more that you appreciate what they are. So you can receive all those benefits to you. So that's wonderful. Yeah, it's just something kind of interesting that's evolved over the, the years. Um, so... Well, uh, one thing I was curious about, too, is um, how does our digestion affect the mind, body, and spirit? Because we talk about how the mind and body are interconnected. So it isn't just two separate things. They definitely 
affect each other. So how does the digestion, since we're talking about the stomach and the spleen and the pancreas, how does that all affect the mind and the spirit? Yes, I mean, the, what we were talking about a little bit ago, about being really aware of what you're digesting, um, there is that interrelationship between what you're, the foods that you're taking in and then how that affects the different organ systems, the energy organ systems that are associated that resonate with that season. And then what your body and your mind are used to and receiving those benefits or not receiving those and how strong or how weak are you in that organ system and how aware are you? How much do you appreciate? How much do you draw upon that? Or how much do you just not use that organ system? Um, so all of those things affect how we digest our food then how we receive awareness from them with our mind and then how we either repress or express or through our emotions because the, the purpose of emotions is not to freak out, you know, or to or to get ourselves uh, you know, attached to something, which we use that a lot. We abuse our emotions for that. But to simply motivate from the mind to the body and then from the body to the mind. And then all together, how we use that with our spirit. So, um, yeah, it directly affects uh, everything. So it's very important to pay attention to your digestion. One of the way I've got a, some tips to good digestion on the Five Element Foodies on Facebook, on the page there. And... Um, one of the key things is to eat like a king or queen for breakfast and a prince or a princess midday and then a pauper in the evening. And we kind of sometimes have a tendency to do that backwards. Uh, when you're eating the most important meal of the day with the most vital nutrients and nourishment in them at sunset, then what happens is the body stagnates and the foods stagnate in the body and they just sit there and then the mind doesn't do anything with them either. And so it's like a surge that's building up in us. And it does lead to inflammation, leads to a host of other uh, ailments. Um, so it really is good to eat the most important meal of the day with the most nu nutrients in the morning. That's one of the main things for digestion. Good I digestion. Know, yeah, I feel the best when I have basically dinner for breakfast not only balances like my blood sugar for the entire day really well, but like you're saying, um, I, I feel like I get the, the most energy that day and I tend to eat. I don't go, you know, pig out <laughs> later in the day if I've had this right. really good meal first thing. And I don't do it for weight loss, but I know it, it can help people with weight loss as well because um, it avoids, yeah. you know, feeling like you got to eat all day. Um, and when we were talking about that digestion, it's interesting because – I know when I'm relaxed or just enjoying life and I'm not stressed, I digest my food way better than when I'm stressed and things are not going well. Like I can handle eating things uh, much easier when, you know, life is good and I'm not stressed. Yeah. Well, we have so much, uh, you know, stress is an interesting word right now <laughs> because, you know, it's kind of a natural resistance that we have to have in our, in our daily life. But then there's also a breakdown, which I think a lot of people associate with stress, um, which is overuse of something. And so it's abuse or overuse of something. And then we react to it because it's not, it's not natural. It's not a natural flow to us. And we're, we're saying no, and we don't listen to that. And so, you know, either a mind, body, or spirit, or something saying, no, that's too much for me right now, and it's not, it's stopping the flow, you know, the natural flow, so, um, yeah, we need to pay attention, that's, a, that's another way of digesting, of having good digestion, is paying attention to your stress, and uh, your reaction to that overload, 
of whatever it is, if it's overload of food, you know, that we're talking about, overload of stimuli. We're on social media for you know, six hours that day. Um, that, would, that would be an overload of stimuli. And taking too much digestion, whether you're aware of it or not, you can digest everything like that. If you're at, um, you know, if you're constantly eating, you, you cannot take in the, your body cannot take in the nutrients. It doesn't, it cannot physically, it's not a possibility to take in all those nutrients that you're just stuffing in, stuffing in your body at that time. So timing is a very important part of good digestion. That's why it's, you, it's good to track, um, you know, you want to eat light, light kind of spring-like, moisture-like foods during the morning. Um, and uh, you want to eat, you know, the sustenance of that like during midday, mid-morning to midday, like more hearty foods. And then really light foods, uh, like snacks more, like in the evening. Um so, and that's like a timing thing because that's when the organs are most prevalent to, the, to really use all those nutrients and break them down for your body. So, you, you know, you want to track um, how, how you digest in different times of the day as well. Well, that is something we've heard so much about. They always talk about breakfast being the most important meal of the day to get things going. And how often do we just get up in the morning, we're running late, and so we just grab a piece of toast or maybe a cup of coffee on the way out the door. And that doesn't really get things going. So then we're running on reserves for half the day until we get to lunch, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of times our habits, we, we don't really pay attention to our reserve bank, you know, what we have that we really have available to us. I mean, we, we leave the house and we're not ready. We're not prepared for the day. Or uh, we just go around, you know, and we're not prepared uh, for things that might come up. Or what we really need, you know, taking stock of what we really need. So, yeah, that's a good point. I think that was, like, one of the best definitions of stress that I've heard because I can totally relate to that. Like, if I've been on the computer too long, you know, I can start you know, getting a headache or not feeling right. And it's basically my body saying, okay, enough of this computer. But, you know, often, like you said, we don't listen and we're like, no, I got to get one more thing done on the computer. And then, you know, you get some health issue going. Um, and, you know, yeah. one of the things I was also wondering, Teresa, is I noticed in the summer, my, so my sleeping patterns change according to the season. I need way less sleep in the summer. Like even if, you know, I'm not up teaching a class, I'm, you know, I'm up at seven. You know, in the winter, if my alarm doesn't go off, I can easily sleep till, you know, 8.30 or 9. So um, do we need less sleep when it's warm out? And why is that? Well, I mean, the, the winter time is the time you have less light available, you know, longer nights, shorter days, and it's opposite in summer, at least the first part of summer. <laughs> and so what's happening is that there's that bio clock, um, which each day is broken down into you know, these big, the five seasons that we're working with, you have those uh, throughout the day as well. And so you, your body is responding to that, those natural elements um, just innately. And in the winter time, you're meant to kind of slow down things, you know, water becomes frozen <laughs> during that time, a little colder, more compacted. So we're meant to slow down, reflect, restore, take stock, you know, be by the fire, warm ourselves up, uh, sleep more. Uh, you respond to like nighttime by sleeping and kind of going inside and then when you're with light, you're responding to movement. You know, light in itself is movement. And it creates um, that response within your mind, body, and spirit as well. So, yeah, you, you don't need, you don't really need as much sleep because you have more energy available to you 
to help you in that time. Well, do you have any thoughts on um, like food and seasonal wellness tips for late summer? Yeah, you know, one thing I was thinking about on break is I missed one of the things that I've been eating every day <laughs> for summer. That's a watermelon. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we just things. had a big juicy watermelon recently. It was so refreshing. <laughs> yeah, watermelon is refreshing. It replenishes all your vital fluids. It restores, uh, you know, uh, the vital essence and vital fluids and minerals. And it restores the balance of the electrolytes in, uh, in your body. And it helps with heat, kind of diminish heat. And it's one of the main foods and juices. And now you can get watermelon juice, like a lot of places, just go to the store and pick up, pick up some watermelon juice. So that's great. I love that. And it helps with heat stroke. That's one of the first things. You know, if I'm going out, I'm going to be outside in the heat for a long time. You know, I have, we had somebody prepare a roof, you know, uh, and at work and it was so hot and I was offering watermelon uh, and watermelon juice to them and it just it helps with heat stroke it's one of the first things that you do to help people with heat stroke um, and it helps you it helps kind of balance I think the water waves it, replenish, it, re, it replenishes and re, kind of revitalizes um, the plumpness in your um, which is kind of that one way of re knowing that it's restoring what's needed. And when you lift your flesh up, you know, from the inside out, and you actually have some good flesh there that's moving with good blood and stuff like that, uh, watermelon really helps with that. It's wonderful. Well, you know, it never ceases to amaze me that right in the heat of summer, when your body is tending to get dehydrated and you're hot and they need to keep cool and then here's this big plump watermelon that's growing out there which <laughs> is just the perfect remedy for all of those things it's no it's, well, i love it yeah it's, it's just yeah. fascinating just observing all these the the timing of the different foods and the when they come out and and what you need when yeah there's a great like potatoes grow in summer uh in late summer um uh, and there's a great recipe that's a summer vegetable soup that really does help balance you very, very, uh, just really good. And it consists of uh, potatoes, uh, white onion, some corn, which is prevalent now as well, fresh tomatoes, watermelon rind, green beans, long grain brown rice, and uh, vegetable broth. And you kind of saute all of those together, and then cook them in uh, fresh tomatoes with some vegetable broth and cook everything until it's tender with some, you know, have a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of fresh parsley, and it's just a little bit of sesame, sesame oil is what I would use to saute the vegetables in, and it's just so hearty, and it's it just feels really good and it helps to cool you, helps to balance you, helps to move the water. And it's just really refreshing. That's interesting. Cause I don't normally think of wanting soup in the summer, but that sounds delicious. So come on over here, Teresa yeah. and make us a batch of that. <laughs> I know. I would love to. <laughs> so, um, well, I did have one question also about the rice because you mentioned that rice is really good. Like, on the travel and does it matter whether it's white rice or brown rice there's all these different kinds of rice available now does it matter what kind of rice that you're using yeah, brown rice has a little bit more nutrition uh but you know rice in general is going to be better than nothing um you know i use right now long grain brown rice because the longer the rice the more that it's going to move the water the more you know, like short grain short grain brown rice you use more in winter time and fall because it helps store uh, the water more and store the energy so you want to move things now you want things to move so uh, long grain and long 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 grain rice rices are better right now more morbid more medicinal 
Now, does it be need to be in its natural grain form, or is it okay to eat products made with rice, like rice cakes and things like that? Do you still get the benefit from those products? Yeah, you still you still get the benefit from that. I mean, I I drink uh, there's a toasted uh, rice tea that's really good. I drink that. That's it's definitely medicinal and it does help you as well. You know, you're going to get more of the full benefit from the actual full ingredient. Like if you're eating a full fish, you know, with everything in it, like that's served whole, you get the benefit of the whole fish, you know, rather than just one part of that. So it's the same thing with grain. Uh, And there are some, there's lots of like, I I eat a rice cereal in the morning uh, with oats in it sometimes I vary my grains, but the one thing that I have always in it right now is brown rice and oats. And um, then I'll add different things. That really helps nourish you. That's what I have for breakfast. And if I don't have that, I just do not feel nourished. If I don't have that with some kind of blueberry, some kind of antioxidant, I like blue. (laughs) Because you don't get a lot of blue foods. You know, blue, blue foods help uh, the liver function, and I'm moving a lot with my muscles during the day. So I really need that smooth uh, movement. And uh, blue foods and green foods help nourish the muscles. And so I like some blue foods in my oatmeal. So I like blueberries and, you know, some cooked uh, or toasted seeds or Nuts in there are really good. Um, and, you know, uh, figs are really good for restoring your vital essence in your, in your kidneys with your low back speaking or your low back there, Patrick. So All I right. put that in my, oatmeal, my, my rice oatmeal cereal. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds really good. And speaking of blue foods, I'm assuming you're not talking about things with blue number five in it and things like that. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> good point. Good, good point. Good point. Because, <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about some of these, like, Pop-Tarts with these neon colors now and stuff. I remember when I was growing up, you know, I uh, I mentioned on the air earlier that I was diagnosed as being hyperactive. And that was probably, you know, the predecessor of what's now ADHD and all that. And uh, so I was actually put on a natural diet instead of medication. And it worked great and it was just getting away from all the (laughs) artificial colors artificial flavors artificial preservatives all those things uh it's it's just amazing how that changes the chemistry in your body and then as we've been talking about here that when the chemistry in your body gets out of whack then you know it affects your mind as well so your mind and body you know work so closely together but um yeah i really love that you know getting lots of different colors in your foods you know i love like the peppers that come out in summer, you know, now, you know, they have the orange peppers and the red peppers and the yellow peppers. Mm-hmm. So I really love Yeah, it. there's a different, there's a different color associated with every, you know, color, um, different color associated with every organ system. And one thing that's kind of a mantra to me that I remember, mind, body, spirit, this is kind of mind, body, spirit mantra, is building a connection in our unmoored world. I like that word, unmoored. Because it, it means that you no longer attach a vessel. And a lot of times, when I was speaking of like airheads, we ourselves with one thing over the other. There's a specialized world right now. And um, not that that's bad, but you do need to balance that out. And so we lack, we lack things. You know, we, we saturate ourselves with one organ over the other with one element over the other, with one kind of food over the other, with one person over another, with one, you know, kind of uh, physical exercise over another. And so we we lack a connection with balance. And color is a good way of cueing us into, are we getting everything that we need? Like when you have everything uh, with all the colors in the rainbow, when you're eating foods that represent all the different colors, um, they really do. That's one good way of saying, yeah, I'm, just, I'm supplement, supplementing myself with the things that I need. And it looks so fast. you will have that connection, <laughs> that whole connection, yeah. And so um, 
fall is coming up, you know, and um, so when I, for example, when I teach numerology, whatever, I always teach everything's about cycles and the better that you do in one cycle, the easier the next cycle will be. Like if you're, you know, I teach numerology, if you're in a personal year seven and you really complete it well, when you go into the next year, which would be an eight, it's easier. So my question is with the food. So if I do, you know, some of the suggestions you offered, um, you know, do the replenishing when fall comes around, which for me is one of the more difficult seasons to get into because it seems like such a harsh movement from, you know, 90 degrees sunny to all of a sudden, you know, sometimes 40 degree weather. Uh, Does that mean that the fall I'll get through it a little bit easier? Yeah, I mean, with the creative cycle, because you have, like, metal, which is the element that's associated with fall. So what I would say to you with a consultation, um, fall is something that, you know, it's a little bit harsher. You use the word harsh kind of elements. I'm assuming maybe wind. Are you saying, why are you saying harsh? Because of the wind or yeah, the weather? Yeah, you know, it just seems bit- like you know, the, the balmy summer days, all of a sudden, you know, well, just my schedule gets way more intense in the fall. Uh, Kids are going back to school. So it just seems like, oh my gosh. And a lot of people seem to get colds. And so, you know, it just seems like, whew, everything happens in the fall. And I always end up getting some kind of weird physical symptom that pops up. Yeah. So one thing that you can do is chrysanthemum is a great uh, flower that you can, that is in Asian markets and uh, Chinese markets, and they even have it now in health food stores, is dried uh, chrysanthemum. And you can get, make it, I put that in a green tea right now. So, and it's really good right now in the, when, because both those things are cooling. uh, On the lines, the chrysanthemum is cooling on the lungs, but it all balances and strengthens the lungs. And it, it, it gets rid of toxins in your environment that you take in with your lungs. Uh, so drinking that now with green tea, which is like a, a perfect marriage, green tea and chrysanthemum together, work together really well for a little bit of raw honey. That will help build your constitution so to speak with the harmony between the lung and the liver and help you kind of build that environment so to speak so that when it becomes that hectic time for you you know um, then your your body and your mind is more prepared for it that's one thing that you can do Uh, another thing that you can do right now is to nourish your muscles with I, I know that you do yoga, um, different kinds of medicinal movements that will help uh, strengthen. And you can do things that are specifically for the lungs to help strengthen them. And I would do them right now to help prepare yourself, you know, for fall because late summer is the predecessor to fall. That's the next season. Um, the opposite of fall, you always want to also look to the opposite of that uh, season or that organ system. And, um, you find the opposite of that uh, will also kind of be sometimes your weakness uh, or is what is not as uh, strong during that time. And Well, well Teresa, it looks like we are out too. of time for the show here today. We love having you with <laughs> okay. us. And uh, so people can find you on Five Element Foodies, correct? Excellent Facebook. It's been great to be here. All right. Well, we love having you all with us, too, who have joined us. Please connect with us on Facebook at Spirits Journey Radio. Be sure to like our page. This has been Spirits Journey live on Free Frequency Radio. I'm Patrick Andrews. And I'm Catherine. Have an awesome week. We'll catch you.